What would your life be like if you were the Sorcerer Supreme? Once you'd get past the initial awe of using your mystical abilities, of discovering realms beyond, and of lifting the veil of reality, what would your responsibilities hold? As the sole protector of the world from both supernatural and unnatural forces, would the price to your sanity and health be too great? According to writer-artist Trad Moore in his four-issue 2023 miniseries, Doctor Strange, Fall Sunrise, published by Marvel Comics, that's only scratching the surface. As the Sorcerer Supreme, you could lose your soul, and even your God, completely to the madness of the universe. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to this channel if you haven't, and please give this video a like if you enjoy it. My last video on Zoe Thorogood did 10 times better than any of my previous uploads, and it kind of went viral for a minute there because Zoe actually shared it on her Instagram story, and that was wild. So thank you all for showing your love and support for that video, and welcome to all the new subscribers that I gained from that video. Uh, if you haven't watched it, please go give it a watch and check it out. Zoe actually commented on the video itself as well, so that's pretty cool. And one last thing, please sign up to be notified when my new comic, The Fabled Offering, launches on Kickstarter this fall. If you like fantasy, if you like science fiction, if you're a fan of Star Wars, Dune, Tron, Elder Scrolls, any of those things, you're going to love The Fabled Offering. This book was made for you. We are nearly at 100 signups, and I'm hoping to get to about 150 to 200 before we launch. So you will find that link in the description below. Thank you guys. Dr. Stephen Strange seems to be a character everyone understands, but nobody comprehends. They can understand his function, but not his purpose in the Marvel Universe. He's a wizard who casts spells, a convenient plot device or supporting character to keep in your back pocket when science or reason won't do to quell a threat. He fights demons, devils, and the occasional Dormammu. That one's for free, guys. What you would assume would be a wealth of potential just waiting to be unleashed bountifully has, in retrospect, been sidelined more often than not. Thankfully, the MCU films rewarded comics fans with the beginning of an ongoing solo series in 2015 that persists despite the continual renumbering and relaunches. Yet, when we think of classic Doctor Strange stories, I can't recall more than a few. When was the last time the personality, the being of Doctor Strange, and the world he inhabits fully unlocked? Doctor Strange Fall Sunrise is the answer to the prayer every Doctor Strange fan, myself included, has been whispering to themselves in the back of their minds, but be careful what you wish for. The void, or in this case, the Eye of Agamotto, stares back and you may not like what you see. Fall Sunrise is a challenging book to decipher, and I mean that in the most flattering sense. Narratively, it's not a comic you can just flip through for a good old superhero adventure after a long day, but visually, it takes you away. You can get lost in Tradmore's ambitious layouts and psychedelic line work, totally overcome and enveloped by the impossible land of St. Nistos. It takes some digging, but the treasures uncovered are very much worth it. It takes effort to appreciate the effort Moore has without question bled profusely into Fall Sunrise, and as I ventured further and further into its depths, my own third eye, my analytical writer's eye, couldn't help but peel back the chaos before me and interpret it as an existential nightmare, and not from the mind of the good doctor of this fantastical tale, but its orchestrator. Issue 1 opens with the meditative chant from Doctor Strange. I was searching for something. Something. I found nothing. Nothing. Later in the issue, he passes by a smorgasbord of terrifying, indescribable creatures, commenting to himself, these things I see. What are these things I see? Later in the series, Strange asks himself, When did I last feel secure? And, How does anyone survive a day? My body fails me. My mind assails me. Throughout, he regularly reminds himself that he is, in fact, alive. 
that he has a purpose, a mission, that he is not a dead being. The only respite that he and other characters in the series experience manifests themselves in the form of nature's simple beauties, such as interacting with a small deer or taking in the vastness of an ocean. As I went from issue to issue, it dawned on me. The picture became ever clearer. Tradmore was using Doctor Strange Fall Sunrise as a vehicle to wrestle with his place in the world, his own demons, and his own God, or at least the idea of God. Give thanks to Bithos. The truth is found in blood. Nothing but the blood, cry the inhabitants of St. Nistos. This alludes to the 1876 American hymn, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Moore goes even further to solidify this analogy by explaining that the only way this deity will spare, or in theological terms, pass over their firstborn, is by marking the fronts of their doors with blood, recalling the final plague in the book of Exodus. What I think is another example of Moore using biblical language is how Doctor Strange will repeat, my will be done, in moments of anguish. In the penultimate issue, Strange states, I need no destination beyond death, just this life. I want beauty. I want to love and be loved. Is that not universal? Here and now, may we simply exist? All these gods and kingdoms upon earth and pleoma and on infinite worlds across every universe, steeples and salvations, altars and nations, saviors and symbols and sacraments. I don't want any of you. Please leave my heart and mouth. I accept what you are. I let you go. You've hurt me too much. It's here where the charade ends and the subtext of false sunrise is no longer subtext, but the naked truth of this project. It feels very personal, very vulnerable, and despite whatever you may or may not believe, very authentic and human. Haven't we all pointed fingers at God or the universe or fate? Haven't we all at one time or another questioned whether or not we were properly living and breathing, not just merely existing? I have. I sure know others that have. It's in this respect that false sunrise moves in front of the line for attention, beckoning us to think and think hard about one's predicament as well as one's footprint on the world. Do we cave under the suffering, the pressure, the anxiety of existence, or do we strive as Dr. Strange does? So spit on me, Bithos. Crash down on me, son. Bury me alive in loss and unending terror. Squeeze me till I'm not but red gore on your fingers. But destroy my faith in humanity, in myself, in my own love and will? No, nothing. Nothing will destroy the healers we choose to be. My favorite scene in False Sunrise is found in its fourth and final issue. Stephen is asked by an ally, What blade do I hold? As they attempt to win the final battle. He replies, I have an idea for a blade. Not sharpened for killing, but for healing. Deeper than flesh. As he speaks these words, flashback panels of Doctor Strange's past life as a surgeon are their companion pieces. Finally, I thought, Someone who not only understands, but comprehends our Sorcerer Supreme, the one and only Doctor Strange. Someone who can follow through with the character and unfurl him for the audience, for his fans, in meaningful dimensions. So, I'll ask the same question to Trad Moore that he asked the reader. How can I not be inspired by you? And then I will come alongside him in agreement at his conclusions. I love you, the unloved. I love you, the damned. I love you so much, my forlorn and shattered companions. If he or she or they shared this sentiment, that's a God I could believe in. And yes, that's a God I'd be willing to wrestle with too.